All right. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another session of the Penyan Action Coalition's Community Read of The Line Becomes a River by Francisco Cantu. We hope there are lots of you out there reading along and watching. My hair's a little messed up. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm not used to being on camera, so it's a shock sometimes. Um, we're deep into part three of the book, and I think we're even getting on towards um, on towards dealing with the end of the book, uh, but we're not quite there yet. Um, so I hope you are with us and are, uh, even if you're not commenting with us, um, at least are hopefully thinking about uh, some of the topics we've raised or thinking about things that come up in your own thoughts as you're reading these. Um, and if you watched our last one, which went on and on and on for about 46 minutes on Friday, uh, <laughs> uh, you know that a lot of things come up in these discussions. Oh, hi, Scarlett. Glad you could make it. Um, and I should probably have been leading all of these sessions from the very beginning with the, uh, the statement that uh, the individual opinions expressed by either the folks who send me messages ahead of time or by I myself do not necessarily reflect the, um, you know, the, 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 okay, my boyfriend's in the back making faces while I'm trying to say something serious. Hopefully he'll stop now. I'm sorry. All right. As I was saying, the things that we say don't necessarily uh, reflect an official stance of any organization that is uh, represented um, in these reads, either the Penyon Action Coalition uh, or myself as a librarian. Um, okay, Claudia, keep trying. Scarlett can hear me, right? Hopefully. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say that because, you know, I let my my uh, my flag fly a little bit on Friday. And uh, now that I've made a, uh, a little uh, preliminary statement, I can fly it even higher. But no, I'm not going to. Um, today, I think will be a shorter one, both because Friday was so long and because I don't have quite as much uh, material ahead of time. So uh, I'm going to get into it. And if you're out there and you have thoughts, either uh, in reaction to what I read to you or just your own thoughts that came to you independently, please do share it in the comments. So today's topic, uh, as drafted by Claudia, who hopefully can hear us at some point, uh, the topic is Catalyst for Change. And Claudia wrote... Cantu's mother tells her son that he wasn't just observing during the four years he served on the border, but actively participating in the events that took place there. She says, quote, you can't exist within a system for that long without being implicated, without absorbing its poison. It's a part of who you've become, page 231. Jose's court-appointed lawyer, Walter, says that, quote, a lot of people in the immigration system lose sight of people's humanity and that the border patrol agents objectify these people all the time. Page 187. Quote, how do you come home to your kids at night when you spend your day treating other humans as dogs? He asks on page 188. Yet after leaving the border patrol, Francisco Cantu befriends Jose, an undocumented migrant who has been in this country for 30 years. For two years, they meet and break bread together every day. For two years, they share many details of their lives with each other, as seen on page 173. When Jose is arrested crossing the border after visiting his dying mother, Cantu's reaction is, no, not Jose. What has brought about this change in Cantu? What does he know now that he didn't know before? What can we learn from his experience about what is necessary to change hearts and minds? Oh, thank you for, for letting me know, Scarlett, that you and Cindy are both there and hearing. Very good. Um, so let's, uh, let's hit that end question, the end questions that Claudia presented for us again, so that we know, you know, the context in which we're discussing this. So after learning that Jose has been arrested crossing the border, Cantu's reaction is no, not Jose. What has brought about this change in Cantu? What does he know now that he didn't know before? What can we learn from his experience about what is necessary to change hearts and minds? 
excellent questions. Um, and so I have, again, I have several thoughts from several of the Penny and Action Coalition organizers. Um, but if you out there in comment land have your own thoughts, please do share them. So first we've got Cindy. Um, and since I didn't have as many this time and uh, <laughs> I, it was a little bit complicated to try to string together the conversations uh, like I did last time, which is I think why I ended up going on and on and on. Um, but I think it went okay. Hopefully it was all right for you out there in viewership. Uh, but today I'm going to be more straightforward. I'm just going to read each, each contribution as it came to me. So uh, in response to uh, Claudia's uh, questions for this topic, Cindy has written, uh, on page 231, Cindy writes, I reread the section in which Cantu's mother brings up the possibility of, or is it Francisco wrestling with the idea of visiting Jose, going to Jose and listening to him. She tells Jose that in some cultures, uh, there is the belief that our souls leave us during the night and visit the people who care about us. Is our soul our real identity, who we really are? If so, who we really are, our soul, connects with those who care about us. That is a comforting thought to me. Another example of identity, the movie Coco came to mind. I haven't seen it, but it was a popular one. Uh, Coco visiting the dead, connecting with his father. Our lives are richer when we learn about other cultures. Um, I've said this before and I'll say it again, especially since I know Cindy is there listening, that I love the way uh, she gives a holistic um, overview of her thoughts as she's reading these sections and provides good overarching um, meta commentary, which is really awesome to get into. Uh, let's see, I had a comment. Um, oh yes, Mickey comments that this uh, goes to the discussions about not thinking of numbers of immigrants, but individuals and their own stories. Absolutely. Um, Cindy continues. Okay, I think I saw from the back and forth in the email thread uh, that this was asked by Cindy and answered. Um, we all sometimes, you know, we're reading along and maybe the dog is distracting us or the TV is distracting us or whatever. And so something kind of slips by. Um, so Cindy asked whether um, Francisco ever visited Jose in Mexico. And maybe that's not covered in the book, actually. Maybe that's something that happened. It was just discussed as a possibility in the book. Um, and it was up to uh, finding out after the fact whether that actually happened. Um, so she asked, does Francisco visit Jose in Mexico or is the story that Jose tells told to Francisco when he is in the United States? Um, and I think I saw from a response that uh, Claudia provided that uh, Francisco Cantu did ultimately visit Jose in Mexico. Uh, again, I haven't read it. <laughs> Well, that's my daily confession. So I don't quite grasp the significance of that, other than obviously the significance of two people who meant a lot to each other um, having a chance to visit after, after one of them is no longer uh, able to be in this country. Um, but it does sound like indeed um, Francisco Cantu has gotten a chance to visit with uh, Jose subsequently. And if anybody knows anything more about that situation, if you'd like to share it in the comments, uh, please do. If not, that's okay too. Um, Cindy goes on, the end of part three is a separate section, the telling of Jose's story. His story begins and ends in Spanish. He is Mexican, that is his identity. Jose's story begins in Spanish. Mira aquí la ley viene de los narcos. Look, here the law comes from drug traffickers. The section ends with Jose's words, No, no me quedo aquí. Voy a seguir intentando pasar. Jose says, I am not staying here. I will keep trying to pass. When Jose begins his story, so much like our friend's story, uh, the friend who was uh, the catalyst for uh, the Penyon Action Coalition's formation, uh, when I read it, sorrow comes to my soul, a lump comes to my throat. He talks about pretending Francisco is a nobody so that the narco are not suspicious about this foreigner on the streets. Francisco's identity is falsified. Jose cannot be open and honest about who Francisco is. So interesting, we have all these discussions about 
uh, identity and how usually on it's on the migrant side of the equation that identity gets elided um, and falsified in way in terms of becoming not, no longer unique individuals with these masses of numbers and perhaps these unknown grave sites. And here uh, it seems very significant that in order to protect his friend, Jose has to sort of falsify his identity in the end. Interesting how the shoe can be on the other foot in certain situations. So thank you, Cindy, for those thoughts. Uh, I next have um, some words from Scarlett on Catalyst for Change. So Scarlett writes, um, and oh, I should maybe pause for a second. I go too fast sometimes. So um, if you have things, reactions to any of Cindy's comments, maybe you're typing away. Maybe we'll see that in a, in a few seconds here. I'm just vamping. Um, if you don't have anything to say, that's okay. All right. Um, okay. So we've got Scarlett's comments about catalysts for change. <clears throat> and Scarlett says, while I can't know all that caused Cantu to change, or perhaps better said, grow, I think we saw glimpses of his growing in the incidents where he questioned why he would forget names or where he bandaged feet. It was, however, when he and Jose steadily began to know one another, exchanging bits and pieces of their lives and their aspirations that Cantu grew to understand and believe in the humanity that we all share. What we can all learn from Cantu's experiences is the necessity of truly seeing and hearing one another. This book is challenging us to recognize that the hearts and minds of the country must grow to understand the necessity of accepting and honoring the humanity of all persons. This book is challenging us to recognize that the hearts and minds of the country must grow to understand the necessity of accepting and honoring the humanity of all persons. We must realize, however, that it is not just individual relationships that are important. The policies that govern how we officially treat one another are of vital importance today and to the future. As Jose says on page 237, some politicians in the United States think that if a mother or a father is deported, this will cause the entire family to move back to Mexico. But in fact, the mothers and fathers with the best family values will want their family to stay in the US. They will cross the border again and again to be with them. So you see these same people, the ones with the most dedication to their family, they begin to build up a record of deportation. They have more and more problems with the government and it becomes harder and harder for them to ever become legal. In this way, the US is making criminals out of those who could become its very best citizens." End quote. The US must heed these statements of Jose for the good of its heart and mind and for the humanity of all. Absolutely. Um, um, that's a really important statement. Very well said, um, Scarlett, thank you. Oh, and good, Claudia can hear now. Good, hi, Claudia. Um, something in the middle of Scarlett's statements pinged in my brain, uh, and I didn't want to interrupt her flow. I think it was where she said we must realize, however, yeah, so recognizing and accepting and honoring the humanity of all persons, and that's something that we can all strive to do on a personal, individual level. But I think it was very wise of her, what she said next, and what she goes into in the second half of her statement, that we must realize that it is not just individual relationships that are important. The policies that govern how we officially treat one another are of vital importance today and for the future. Um, and I think there's this tendency some with goodwill, others perhaps less so to say about not just the immigration issue, but any kind of controversial public topic. Uh, well, as long as we're just treating each other fine, if I'm nice to you and you're nice to me and I'm kind and you're kind and everybody's kind, um, then everything will be okay. And why are, why are we making such a big fuss and why are we demanding we change laws? And why are you asking, you know, why are you, you know, acting, um, you insist that I behave in a certain way and you want to limit my freedoms or something by creating new laws, whatever the argument might be. Um, and I get into this uh, 
sometimes in reflection of my LGBTQX activism on, in, in other ways as well. Um, it can't just, you can't just rely on you and me and he and she to do the right thing all the time. Humans just aren't going to do that. Uh, unfortunately, there's always going to be somebody who wants to not be kind, uh, who wants to, um, show their bias and their prejudice. And that's why we have a government. That's why we have laws um, to decide on the best course of action for the greatest number of people. And in our system, the thing that's really, really frustrating, but also really, really beautiful and wonderful uh, and impossible in any other era in human history is that um, we get to keep trying it until we get it right. You know, we don't have a king who says, my word is the law of God and that's the way it's always going to be. And if you want to change it, you have to have a complete and total revolution every 500 years. We say, here was, here's the law now. Here are the lawmakers who have created that law and signed it into action and have executed that law. And if the majority of the people decide that that's not good and isn't working right, in theory, four years, two years, whatever the case may be, if we're trying to switch the, the co Congress, we're trying to switch the presidency, whatever, we get a chance to do it over again within certain, certain frameworks. And that's really, really chaotic and really, really frustrating, but it's also really, really hopeful. Now, what's not super great is how that process and that system have been subverted um, to not reflect the will of the majority of the people all the time. And that's a whole other issue that we won't get into right now. Um, but I think that uh, rather than just trusting that we can all be good to each other and allow the law to do its thing and allow individuals to do their things, um, we have to keep fighting for whatever we think individually the greatest um, possible outcome legally and electorally is um, and hope that through our efforts, the best outcome will occur. And it's really scary because it might not but we keep fighting, don't we? So thank you for those thoughts, Scarlett. Um, we also had uh, some thoughts from Mickey and my apologies if uh, I don't see anything from Ed in there. So I think it's just Mickey today, but I know sometimes they collaborate. Um, so Mickey writes, there is a long discussion between Cantu and his mother on Christmas Eve. Cantu is struggling with what and how to say to her. I feel hurt, but it isn't mine, he says, talking about Jose. It's like I never quit, like I'm still part of this thing that crushes. Here he's admitting he changed after working on the border, even though he thought he would not be changed. And in fact, this is four years after he quit. We've talked about his probable naivete as an early 20-year-old when he started. But I think, Mickey says, that after we are out of this pandemic, we all will be changed. How and to what degree and in what ways, I can't imagine yet, although I doubt I'll ever be lazy about washing my hands again without thinking about it. Here, here, I agree. But, Mickey continues, what catalysts for change will there be in healthcare, in hospitals, in politics? Sometimes we make choices uh, and that we think we can know the outcome of them, but can we really? It's kind of funny how this is reflecting a little bit of that extemporaneous stuff I just said. We may or may not have full control over actions of others or even of ourselves. Are we the catalysts or others? Or is it a force we have little control over? Or is that our call to be catalysts in areas of our lives for which we have a passion? Huge questions. And we obviously don't have the answers to them, but asking the questions uh, is the first step to maybe finding our own personal answers. Um, so I, I'll, I know I went through that fast. Let me read that key last part again. So if, if we're all going to be changed by the events around us, uh, and she uses the example of the pandemic, it could have, there could be other examples. What catalysts for change will there be in healthcare, in hospitals, and in politics? Sometimes we make choices and that we think we can know the outcome of them, but can we really? We may or may not have full control over actions of others or even of ourselves. Are we the catalysts? Are others? Or is it a force we have little control over? 
Or is it that our call to be catalysts in areas of our lives for which we have a passion? To be continued, <laughs> for us all to be determined, I suppose. Um, but what do you guys think of that? Where do you think the catalyst for change comes? I see uh, Cla Claudia has commented, uh, I think that if abolitionists hadn't pushed for change or if women hadn't joined forces to fight for the vote, et cetera, the status quo would have remained. You're right, Alex. I guess you have to join forces and speak out. And so that speaks to sort of a, sort of an answer to Mickey's questions. Um, and that it's sort of an all of the above approach. Um, we join together to try to make the change we want to see. Um, and maybe that creates a force for change that is bigger than any one of us or maybe even bigger than any one cause, if causes that sort of tend in the same direction, snowball and roll down the mountain, um, resulting hopefully someday in some sort of change uh, for the better, whatever that, whatever your definition of better might be. And I know we all struggle because we all have separate definitions of better and good and right and justice. And I have a hard time with that sometimes uh, because <laughs> isn't what I want the best. And don't we all think that? Um, <laughs> but we won't get into that either. Um, that's the end of the comments I had ahead of time. I hope I didn't miss anybody today. Um, I had a bunch of meetings this morning and then all kinds of fun stuff all day long. So uh, Mickey, uh, a reason to read books from a broad range of ideas and situations is to awaken our ideas or passions. Absolutely can't argue with that whatsoever. And hopefully this book is one of those that is doing that for people. Um, okay, uh, I'll give you a few more minutes if anybody else out there has any thoughts that they would like to add while I blather on in the background here. Um, but um, we'll, we'll finish up earlier than we have been because 46 minutes the other day was way too long. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and even, you know, 20 minutes uh, seems like a good number of minutes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm pokey today. I don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, um, we've got two more days of this ongoing series of sessions left. Um, I think next time, let's see, I had it pulled up here a minute ago. We're going to be getting into... I'm not sure if we're done with part three yet now as of today, or if we've got another set of questions from part three. Got my other computer off to the side, which is a lot slower. Ah, okay. So we did Catalyst for Change just now. So the topic for next time is about uh, current policies. Uh, so that should be exciting. <laughs> Tell all your friends to definitely show up for that one because nothing... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like talking about current policies. Very important. Um, and then after that, uh, for Friday, we'll be discussing the author's purpose. Uh, and I think, does that take us through the end of these sessions, or do we have a separate? Uh, are we going to have a separate session for the epilogue and author's note? Don't have to answer me now, but there are possibilities. Um, and certainly things that we want to cover. I'm not seeing from the uh, the written statements here whether these cover up to the very, very end of the book or not, so I'm not sure. Um, but we certainly are getting close, and um, I hope you're enjoying sitting in on these sessions. It's certainly been a whirlwind for me. Um, yeah. So we'll be back on Wednesday at the same time. I'll wait for those church bells next door to start ringing, and then I'll hit the go live button, and we will see how we do for a discussion of current policies. All right, I'm not seeing... Okay, Claudia says these should be for everything. All right, so yep, that gets us to the end of the book by Friday. Um, and Mickey says the author's note and epilogue are very heady and full of many topics. Um, yeah. Obviously, we're not touching on everything that we possibly could in these sessions, um, but I think we're doing a pretty good job of foregrounding um, a lot of um, provocative and evocative topics 
Um, and hopefully you all at home are having a good time thinking about them yourselves. And once we're done with this book, we will see what we want to do next. Maybe we'll take a break. Who knows? <laughs> I'm sure we need it. Um, okay, I'm going to sign off now. Um, yes, Scarlett's confirming. Next time is the epilogue and Friday's off. See, I would know this if I read the book. See, I mean, Alex's misunderstandings are always gumming up the works, but uh, you're all patient with me, so I appreciate it. Um, so, okay, finishing up the book by Friday, and then... Um, We'll be in touch with what the next steps for the Penny and Action Coalition are. Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for watching, whether you're watching it right now or whether you come back and watch later. I see every video, our number of watches inches up. So I know people are watching. Um, maybe in the next couple of sessions, if you're one of the shy ones who is watched without commenting, you'll decide to, uh, to come out of your shell a little bit and share your thoughts with us no pressure. All right. Thank you, everybody. I will talk to you soon and hope you all have a good night. See ya.